Hello again folks. I'm back with the install of my 31 plate HHO generator. I've mounted it on the back of my in my bed uh, on the right in the box screwed to the floor and then the electrolyte uh, reservoir and bubbler are fastened to the dog cages I have rigged up in the back of my truck. I haul my dogs around with me. So you can see I just clamped a couple boards on there, fastened the uh, bubbler, the electrolyte uh, reservoir, and my uh, relay box. You can see down in here, and hopefully you can see that, we have the uh, uh, 31 plate generator with the um, filter. Here's where the gas comes out. Here's where the electrolyte goes back. Over here I have a drain. Runs out through the hole in the bed. And the all the, the wires and um, the hoses run through this cutout. In the, it's actually a knockout plug in the back of the bed. I took an uh, old garden hose and used that as a sleeve to protect the, the wires. You can see the, that comes all the way up to here. Makes it look a little bit better. That's all the fine control wires and the two power wires. Um, I left as much slack in this as I could because you, know, you, you always end up moving these things around. Um, my thermocouple, long thermocouple hasn't come yet, so I had to mount my little one, short one here, right in the window. So I have to turn around and look to see what the temperature is. So you can see the, uh, well, maybe you can't see that. Let me get under here so you can see what's going on. All right, so here's the drain. That's got a quick coupler on it. You can see the wires and the hose and stuff coming out between the bed. Anywhere there's a possibility of rubbing, I use that old garden hose. You can see it just comes along the frame. I might have to edit out a little bit of this because it's going to look a little crazy. Okay, here we are in the front. I'm scooting around on cardboard underneath the truck. This is where it goes up into the cab for the controls, the switches and the amp meter and bolt meter. And it scoots up between the frame here. Once again, I've got, you probably can't see it, but there's a um, garden hose in there to protect it. And we are pretty close to the exhaust here. I had probably within six inches. I have it pretty well secured though. I'm confident we'll be okay. Alright, I'm going to get back out. This part will be edited out again. Hopefully. And here's where it hooks into the battery. Start again here. Here's where it hooks in the battery. Um, that needs to be tightened down. Over here is the shunt. And the wire is going to the amp meter. This is a 100 amp circuit breaker. That controls the whole thing. Uh, in case there's a short in any of these wires, it, it, hopefully that'll trip. In that box back there, I've got 20 amp circuit breakers for each uh, hot plate. Uh, that way, and switches so I can turn them on and off individually. You can see the hose coming up. And I had a hard time deciding where to put the, um, have the HHO go in. This is actually going in before the air filter. Uh, I've read a lot of conflicting opinions on that. Most people say you should put it as close as possible to the intake. Well, this is a turbocharged engine, and right down here is about as close as I could get. But you can see we have all these other pipes. It's got an intercooler on it. So the, these pipes hold a lot of volume, especially since it's all compressed, and it goes down in here to an intercooler. It's like a big radiator in front of the other radiator. So I figured it wouldn't make much difference to have this extra volume of gas. Also, in a diesel, um, I don't think I have to worry too much about flashback. Uh, not like you would on a gasoline engine. Um, and, but I do have, uh, this is a PCV valve that I've used as a check valve. And this is a, a flame trap that I made um, out of a, a coupler to hose barbs. And it's jam-packed with uh, brass wool, even out to here, uh, fine brass. Fine, fine bronze wool. 
Um, and this is just a half inch. It's at the the uh, PVC, not the PVC, the uh, positive crankcase ventilation valve here, PCV, uh, was half inch on one end and three eighths on the other. So I had to take a piece of half inch hose, telescope it with three eighths hose, and that actually made a nice tight fitting. And uh, but I also took stainless steel wire to it just to make sure. Um, this is all probably just for looks anyway, because it's probably never going to have any trouble in the flashback area. Okay, so this is a uh, Ford F-350, 7.3-liter uh, diesel, four-wheel drive, with dual rear wheels, automatic transmission. It's the worst configuration for gas mileage you can get. Uh, well, no, you could have a gas engine, I suppose, and that would be a little bit worse. So here we are inside the car, the truck. Here's the control box. It's got the amp meter. Uh, I've got a, a digital amp meter voltmeter combination and a temperature LED, uh, LED temperature meter that I was going to mount in here, but it hasn't come yet. Um, so we'll start this thing up. I, when I mounted the, the switches, um, it has, has to be positive coming to the switches. Now I found, I rooted around underneath the dash here and I found some unused outlets, um, plugs, that were hot when I turned the ignition on, but not hot when I had the accessory on. That way, when I have these turned on, right now I'm turning on each individual hot cell, this voltmeter is not right. It reads a couple of volts low. I got it off of eBay and I didn't check it before I put it in. I might be able to adjust it. Uh, but anyway, so that way when I turn it off, it turns off. If I go to listen to music with the accessory on, the train moves along. It, uh, it doesn't run unless I have it turned on. Now, one of the things I, everyone probably should do is when, they, when they're running their HHO, um, when you come up to park, you should turn these off. Let the engine run for a, you know, a little bit. Clear out all the HHO. In my case, it's going to take a little while because I've got such a long tube. And also, if you ever watch your, your um, generator, it tends to put out gas for a little while after you turn it off. So anyway, that's the install. Um, I'm going to do some mileage tests and I'll probably do probably three to five uh, mileage tests including power tests. I plan on trying to pull a grade with a heavy load and see uh, how much difference the HHO makes. If, um, if indeed we are getting a lot better um, efficiency out of the burning of the fuel then uh, there should be more horsepower there too. So I've got a couple hills around here. We live in western North Carolina and um, when I'm pulling a trailer with a tractor on it or with a, a load of dirt or whatever. Um, if I'm fully loaded, this one hill, my, I slow down to about 40 miles an hour going up it. So that's going to be a good test. If I can get uh, better mileage or better miles per hour up that hill, then I've got more horsepower. Signing off for now. Um, more mileage tests to come.